So now what we need to do is install authentication with NextAuth. So if you go onto the website, nextauth.js and click get started, it does say here how to install. So we are using Yarn. So Yarn add NextAuth. So if I just copy this and create a new terminal, I'm going to just install NextAuth into the project. So we also are using TypeScript. So we have TypeScript documentation here. But what I am essentially going to do is add a new file. So it says here, add an API route. So to add next auth to a project, create a file in the pages API auth. So if we go into pages, we want to create a new folder in here called API. And we will also be creating our movies API within the API folder. And then a new folder within API named auth and then within auth a new file and we're going to give it brackets dot 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 next auth and close the brackets dot ts because we're using typescript so now i'm just going to copy this across paste this in and we will get some errors so if i just say open this up and instead of github we're going to be using google so if i just go instead of github i'm just going to change all of the github so this will be google because we will need an api key from google themselves and then we are going to import that from slash google like so we also need to create a dot emv file so i am going to go into the package json level and then a new file in here named dot env which is where we will have our env files and I'm just going to call this one Google ID. So Google underscore ID is equal to an empty string for now, because we need to go and get that. And we're going to get a Google underscore secret key as well. So we will do that later on. Okay, so going back into the next auth TSS file, we are getting an error. So if we hover over it, it's essentially saying that we need to provide a string in here. So because this is not a string, we are importing it from the EMB file. We just want to put in here straight after as string. That should fix the error. And the same with the secret key. And we also need to update the name. So I'm just going to name this Google underscore client ID, sorry, or ID, and then Google client underscore secret. Just copy this and go back into our next auth TS. And this is going to be the secret, and this is going to be the Google ID. So now we have that initial setup complete. We now need to go ahead and get a Google api and secret keys so if we go into our so if we go into the google api console for developers and i want to agree and continue so this is my first time on this account setting it up so i want to dismiss this and go into credentials and then create a new project i'm going to name this disney clone youtube and create so the project will be getting created so now we want to select the project okay i've got this and then configure consent screen and just click external for now and create i can ignore the learn section so give this an app name of disney plus i'm just going to put my email in there my gmail we don't need a logo we don't need any of this and then again just give in my email address so if we go on to credentials and then create credentials and we want to go on all auth client id the application type is a web application. I'm just going to give it a name of Disney client. And we are using localhost 3000. So I'm going to add the URI in here. And for authorized redirect URIs, if we just go on to next auth and I type in URI, the redirect URI. So we've got that here. So it'll be localhost slash API slash auth slash callback. And then you put the provider name in here so that in our case is Google. So if I now create, I now have the ID and the secret. So I'm just going to add these into my ENV file like so. And these will be deleted at the end of the video and I'll get new ones for here. So they won't be used. So if I press OK and now if I save all 
and go back into my next all file. I want to delete this because we're only going to be using Google as the providers. So now with next auth, we should have access to something called use session. So if I type in use session, which is already there, we can get access to the status or whether the person is logged in or not. So if I copy this across and go into my header component, so where it says here, if logged in, show the header we, at the top of the functional component, we're just going to paste in the session that we are using and import in the use session from next auth, paste that in. And then we want to have a check to say if session, if session, we want to return a new component, which we will create called signed in header, like so. And we also want to pass down the session as a prop into there because we want to log in and log out. And we have access to that within the session object. So if I save, we need to create a new folder within here named signed in header. So a new folder called signed in header. And this will have an index.tsx file and tsrfce named signed in header which will take in the session as props. And instead of type, I'm going to give this an interface. So interface of props, and this will take in a session. And I'm going to declare this session as session. And this is coming from next auth like so. So now that's the sign in header rendering. So if I save, we have an error within here. So we just need to import the signed in header component. And now we can remove this comment. So essentially this render header function now is saying if there is a session, we want to return the signed in header. Otherwise we want to return the login container. And this is being rendered in here after the logo image. So if I now render header and what we need to do in the login container, is we have access to use session, which is in here. So in use session, if I scroll down further, we should have a sign in and sign out, which is on here. So if I import sign in from next auth react, and also if I import sign out, which is a bit further down, and then all you need to do is add an on click on there to say sign in. So ours is the login. So if we paste that in, close that off, and now if I save and go into my local host and refresh. So now we also need to wrap a session provider around the app. So if I go into my app.tsx and just above global styles, I'm going to import session provider from next auth react, close that off and then add the children within there. And then the session provider has access to the session which is equal to it props dot session. So now I'm going to restart the server. So beyond dev, and if I refresh the page and press log in, we now get directed to slash API slash auth slash sign in. And if I click sign in with Google, it directs me to the sign in with Google page. And if I just log in with my Gmail account. So now, as you can see, we are signed in and we are seeing the signed in header so if i go into header and if there is a session return the signed in header i'm passing in the session so if we go in here and now we are seeing the header so it's just a case of now rendering out the menu items on there so so i'm going to import a nav menu so if i paste that in so this is rendering out the navigation menu of the links that we want to have on the page. So home, search, watch list, originals, movies, and series. So I'm going to import the nav menu styles into our styles file. So in here, import the nav menu styles. So it is a display of flex and we are going to give it a flex of one to give it as much space as possible. We're going to have a margin left of 25 pixels on there. So it gives a bit of space after the logo. The span text, I'm going to have a font size of 13 pixels, some letter spacing, position of relative, and a text decoration of none. So because it is an A tag, we don't want to have the underlines on there. 
we're going to give it a slight transition when we hover over so we're going to give that a line and background of white or in this case we'll give it the props of white so props and then props dot theme white this after section will have a position of absolute because it will be underneath the text a left and right of zero and a bottom of minus six as we are positioning it underneath and then a slight little transition which you can copy but it kind of goes from left to right the image so the image icon on the left of it will have a height of 20 pixels and again styling the a tag here and if it reaches a width of 768 pixels or less then we won't display it at all so if i go back into here and control space and import the styles and now if i save we now have the menu items rendering and as you can see the after effect is showing when we hover over as well so now that the menu is rendering we just need to create a sign out button here and also show the icon of our gmail login so a circle in the corner or whatever we have as an image so if i create a section named sign out as a div and now there are two children within here and we can only have one so i'm going to create a react fragment it is the shorthand version so if we just put empty brackets in like that and then if i copy this and push it up one and in the sign out div we are going to render an image so in this case it will be a user img this will be the image and the source will be equal to and first off what i want to do is comment this out for now and at the top where we are getting our props we want to console log the session so session and now if i save and inspect the page so if i go into my console i get two objects in here i'm just going to open one of them up and in here we get a session and in here we get a user so the user has an image as you can see here an image with the url so what i'm going to do is render that as my user image source so if i uncomment this and then it is going to be session and we're going to add optional chaining to see if we have a session dot user dot image like so and then the alt tag for this is going to equal the same but in this case we're going to just take the name so session user dot name so i now need to add the styles for the sign out and the user image so if i go back into my styles and paste this in so i've got a sign out a drop down and a user image so if i go back and import them in and close this off save all so we now have the circle with the user image on there that is working correctly now when we hover over the icon i want to show a sign out button so all i want to do now is have a drop down span underneath so we have imported the styles for the drop down and in here we're going to have a span which says sign out and all we are going to do is have an on click span on click of sign out being called and this will be called from next auth react and that's imported in from next auth react there so now we're getting an error in here saying no overload matches this call because it could be undefined so what we essentially want to do is check if there is a session first before we render so if session is true we want to return the user image like so otherwise we want to return null and now if i save so now i have this error so what i am going to do is i'm going to put this into a constant so if i cut this out and i'm just going to call this image so at the top here i'm going to give it a const of image is equal to session.user.image as a string and i want to do the same for the name so image is going to be changed to name as a string so on the alt i'm just going to give this a name as the constant and save so now if i log in and sign in with google i get redirected to the new signed in header and now if i hover over we have sign out here so if i just click on that 
we are now signed out also. One slight tweak is sign out should be one word and now I should save. So that is the header complete and the next auth implementation complete as well. Now what we will do is build out the login page. 